Thanks for staying with us now. Nigeria's border closure ostensibly aimed at stemming flow of smuggled goods such as rice and tomatoes, effectively severed trade with neighboring countries like Benin, Niger, and Cameroon. When this report was done, an International Monetary Fund mission to Nigeria concluded that the pace of economic recovery remained slow due to depressed private consumption and a wait-and-see approach from investors. Now that the borders have been reopened, what impact have we seen in terms of local and foreign investment? And how much impact has this had on SMEs and overall economic growth of our nation? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. So I'm going to bring in our guest like in two minutes, but I want to quickly hear. Let me go to Tammy first, since she's our finance expert. Let us give her the floor. <laughs> Tammy, I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts, you know, when the government announced the border closure, August last year, mm -hmm. you know, I mean sorry, August 2019, mm -hmm. and reopened it, I think in December last year. Do you think it had any significant impact, you know, as to what what it was they were trying to um, achieve? Mm -hmm. I mean, so in, in my opinion, I, I think it was a mixed bag. Um, there were pros, uh, pros and cons to that controversial move, you know, and I would say that most of the benefits were at the macro level. So when they were doing that, right, the major reason they cited was smuggling, right? That was the reason uh, that they needed to, that was the reason they, they, they cited to support the closure and mm -hmm particularly for petrol and rice, mm -hmm. you know. So I would say that the Nigerian Treasury benefited from reduced subsidies because anecdotal information supports that, you know, we were subsidizing petrol that was going to be sold along the West African um, corridor, mm -hmm. do you see? Mm -hmm. And also for rice, you know, yes, there were some benefits, you know, um, locally milled rice that is selling, mm. um, you know, so domestic growers must have been happy. I mean, then a public with a population of only 12 million people, you know, they were importing more rice than China. Mm. So it is very clear that they could, they don't have the capacity to consume the rice that they were importing and they must have been, you know, re-exporting that to Nigeria and all of that. So yeah, there were pros and cons, you know, but the ultimate question is, was it implemented the right way? Mm. Do you see? Yeah. Mm. You know, this thing you said about local farm, uh, farmers and local rice being grown, I, don't, I think that thing is just, it's not completely 100%, because we also took stories here when we had the agri uh, um, uh, agri farmers come to say that they were not able to access their farms because of insecurity, exactly. and some were saying that, you know what, you had to pay, uh, what's it called, harvesting fee. It also, mm. I mean, insecurity ha uh, affected the rice farmers, so it's not like they really made, you know, so I don't know, well, we'll, we'll, we'll ask the experts, but you see, let me attempt to ask you this question. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are just novice okay. in this matter. I will say it from a consumer's point, point of view. Point of view. What, do you, what did you notice? First, rice escalated. The price of rice escalated. Fantastic. So we weren't able to buy rice. At the, at that, uh, when we, we were importing rice, we had it at 7,000. And then it was even clean rice we were eating at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But after there was border closure, then we had bad rice coming in mm -hmm. even if it was nigerian rice at the time it didn't taste nice it there were um, stones in the rice and who would want to encourage such mm. you know so if you're doing it just do it right get the products right if you're selling rice at least try and meet up with the international standard of what you were um, mm. eating mm. before um, or producing, uh, what they were producing ah, outside. Sister has become investment. <laughs> investment expert. <laughs> what they were producing yeah. before you know, now. So it, that's my, my take on it. You know, it. it's so interesting. I remember myself, um, we went to the supermarket to get a bag of rice. The bag of rice, I think we bought it before then, before it mm -hmm. finished. We bought it for like 25 or so ah. thousand. By the time they closed border, we bought it for 45,000. The imagine. same size, the same bag of rice. So I was now wondering what's the point. Then again, mm -hmm. a lot of foreign products that came in became very expensive. And I, exactly. I think I would agree with your thoughts mm -hmm. that why don't you leave the borders open? Exactly. Just build your own to the point that it is as, I mean, it's same with quality with this other one. Then if it eventually, if they, and it's cheaper, 
Yes. Same quality but cheaper. Mm -hmm. Let us see whether that uh, imported what one will sell. Thank it you. won't sell. It's simple. You know, let me bring in our guest. So Bamidele Adewale <laughs> is an experienced <laughs> investment advisor, consultant, and personal finance coach with vast corporate experience in investment research and advisory investment banking. Um, financial strategy, mm -hmm. financial analyst, stockbroking, mm. investor relationship, <laughs> real estate advisory and sales business valuation. Mm and business development is plenty. All these money people, just give us the money. That's all we know. He's an <laughs> avid investor himself, and Bamidele has investments which cuts across different currencies, sectors, and asset classes. Thank you so much. And he's joining us live in studio. Thank wow. you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you so, for having me. So you were listening to our conversation about this border closure, because I, I would like for us to just, you know, touch on the border closure, the um, the pros and the cons, like um, Timmy had said, before we now move into, you know, what should be the right thing if you are looking into investment in the country. So what what's your overall um, ac assessment on what happened with the federal government shutting down our borders and reopening it? You know, did you think it helped in any way? Thank you very much. Yes, I do think it helped. Mm. Um, but just as Timmy has said, there have, there have been pros and cons. Mm. So what are the pros? The main pro is that obviously the gov government revenue has increased because now people have to then, um, the, the importation is done through the official, the ports, mm. as opposed to, you know, the, the smuggling that was going on. So they were able to curb the smuggling to an extent. Mm -hmm. So now the, the importers, right, now have to go through the right, the right channel. The right, the right, the right channel. So mm -hmm. that's so... There's, there's been some, some revenue, okay, that has, that has come in there at, at the macro level, okay. Now, where the disadvantage has come in has been at the, at the retail, at the micro it's level. The micro mm. level. Yeah, at the, at the, at the consumer, it starts with the mm. consumers, mm -hmm. okay. The SMEs are not, don't feel it directly. Much, yes. it's, it's actually the consumers because inflation, the major, the major impact of, this, of, of all of this has been on inflation, exactly. okay. Now, inflation has been skyrocketing. In September, I think it was about 13.7% year on year. Um, October, it went up to 14.2% year on year. And then in, in November, I think it climbed up to 14.9 or thereabouts. Mm. And, you know, people are suggesting that it might go to like 15 point something for December. I don't Gosh. think the December figures are out yet. So the major impact of this um, border closure has been on inflation. Towards the consumer. Yeah, towards the consumer. So what this then means is that the consumer has very little um, disposable income. They already had little disposable income before the, 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 the borders were closed. Mm -hmm. But now it, it, they, have, they have a lot less. Mm. Okay, and remember, they are still trying, they, they still haven't recovered from the effects of COVID. Mm. Exactly. A lot of them have and had. NSAS followed afterwards. NSAS followed afterwards and all of the challenges of 2020. So right now, you know, this has only just sort of worsened the already the bad situation, yeah. you know. So by, 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 by the effect of this, the SMEs have also been affected. Why? Because it then means that because if you're a small business owner, right, and your consumer, the people who buy your products, don't have as much disposable income as they used to have before, it then means they can't patronize you the way they used to patronize you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of SMEs are actually struggling as we speak. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really, so that's the summary of, of the effects, no, no. both on the macro level. The macro level hasn't been too bad. The government would probably even be happy. Right, but the consumers, the man on the streets, they are the ones who have been feeling the burden. They are the ones who are feeling the burden. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think that was even a good strategy at all? Love shutting down the border in the first place. Was that a good strategy? Theoretically, theoretically, it one could say it was a one could one could justify the reason for it, mm -hmm. right? Because the, there was a lot of smuggling that was going on. People were doing business illegally and all of that. So they just felt they needed to just get control of the movement of goods, you know, yeah. uh, between Nigeria and neighboring countries, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, theoretically, it, it made sense. The problem was that we don't have the capacity locally, okay, to meet the Mito. demand for rice. Thank you. That's the rice in particular. You know, rice is, everybody <laughs> so is it's rice. all about demands and, and supply. It's all about demand and supply. So, when the demand significantly exceeds the supply, inflation is inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's just basic economics. Mm -hmm. And you know, rice in particular, I'm very particular about rice because rice is, everybody eats rice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can even tell you for free, I ate rice today. <laughs> I ate rice yesterday. <laughs> so, rice is such a staple mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it just cannot afford to play 
with it. Anything that happens to rice, anything that happens to food generally, mm -hmm. right? Because the consumer price index is made up primarily of the food, the, the, the food components of yeah. it. So whatever happens to food happens to the consumer price index and by extension happens to inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is, um, let me, let's digress a bit from uh, food. Let's look at, uh, uh, what should I call it now? Household items, or um, what, what sh I don't know the category to put it, but for clothes, clothes, clothes clothing. So that. there is an individual who is actually um, he sells clothing, and he is into this bend down boutique thing. Mm -hmm. And at the time the border was closed, he said he has been doing it for twenty years, and he didn't have the resources to actually um, start another business. Okay, he didn't have the resources to start another business in Nigeria. But his goods that he had already purchased had been on its way down to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But it didn't get to him before border was closed. So for such an individual or for such a business owner, what would be the right advice to give to him to try to bounce back? <laughs> okay, his, his goods hadn't arrived before the goods, so they are stuck. They sort are of. stuck, exactly. Wow. Until now, he's yet to get his goods. That is a long story. That is a very long story. Is that something, exactly. So is there something that can be done for him to, you know, revamp or get his, himself out of the gutter in t terms of um, financial problems? Well, what, what I'm just thinking off the top of my head, mm. um, right now he's in, a, he's in a very big problem, right? Exactly. Because he doesn't have, he has goods that have not arrived, right? Mm -hmm. And he has obviously potential customers that are waiting. Because the border was closed. Because the border was closed. So, I mean, I don't know, whatever, whatever the cost implication is, maybe if he has to have to pay to get those goods cleared, I don't know what the implications, there might be some cost implications, uh, but the challenge that he faces is that he cannot transfer. Most of, most, more, more often than not, they cannot, these people cannot transfer that mm -hmm. cost burden mm -hmm. to the consumer. Why? Because mm -hmm. they have competitors. Okay. okay? So a competitor who is producing the same product, right, who hasn't had that same challenge, is able to then offer that product at a much cheaper rate. Okay. For me, I would just advise some, someone in that, in that position, just cut your losses, do whatever you can, do the maths, and okay? And find another business. And then just either find <laughs> another business, at least clear the goods, right? Clear the goods. If you can, if well, it's Well, you should possible, be willing to sell at a loss, I think. That's, that's what I'm saying. Mm. So, you know, sometimes they say, just get the cash. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some times in business where you just, just get the cash in, no matter whether it's a profit or it's a loss, just mm. get some cash in yeah. and then go back to the drawing board and then try to think how can you re strategize Maybe probably do some other business or maybe bounce back, but this time around, ensure that, you know, you put certain checks and balances in place, mm -hmm. you know, just to ensure that, that that kind of thing doesn't happen again. All right, Timmy, are you there? I'm here, you know, I was listening to that conversation and I was just wondering to myself, um, I'm like, putting myself in the shoes of a small business owner right now in Nigeria to just understand. So I like that Bami Dele mentioned um, the fact that, you know, government revenues increased um, after they closed uh, the land borders, you know, forcing everybody to import through Lagos. Now I'm thinking about the impact of that on the informal economy and on small business owners. So I'll give you an example. Somebody who has a shop in Lagos Island, for example, has had to go through a lot of stress. Because remember, we have FX liquidity issues. Um, mm -hmm. We have looming devaluation challenges. Do you see? So he's had to go through a lot of stress to import his goods, right? And he's had to import directly to Lagos Port. Now, Lagos Port is very slow. And there's also a grid lock. Terrible at Papa. So he's paying probably almost as much as he paid to get the stuff from China to Lagos to get it from a papa to a shop, you know? So I'm just thinking, right? And if you look at a lot of the manufacturers, the small, um, you know, businesses and manufactured goods in general in Nigeria, you know, about 10 to 20% of the goods that are manufactured in Nigeria are actually sold in all these other West African countries, Cameroon, Senegal, Ghana, you know, Benin Republic and all of that. And most of them are through informal routes, informal not illegal. Mm -hmm. So you have a small business owner, somebody who just buys pasta in Nigeria, and then he just goes across the border to Ghana to sell it. We've stopped all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's okay to say that, yes, you know, the impact was 
largely on the consumers, things ex expensive and inflation, but it just feels like for the average business owner in Nigeria, you're coming out of one and you're being faced with another. Mm. So I know that Bamidele is very, like, it facilitates investment, you know, into SMEs and all of that. So I'm just thinking, what do you think the business owner in Nigeria needs to do? How does he have to reinvent? Because we need these small businesses. SMEs would drive they are the lifeline of every economy up. now. SMEs are the lifeline. They are of the all engine. economies. Exactly. So, what is a small business owner supposed to do in these times? Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if I were to answer that question, I, I would I would say that an SME owner should should talk to a financial consultant because you know. What, whatever it is that you're doing, um, the financial consultant will be able to sit you down and advise you and say, these are your numbers, this is your strategy, and these are the products, this, are the, this is the market that you serve, how can we reorganize, how can we restructure, how can we replan you know, your mm -hmm. business? That's the job of, of a financial uh, advisor. Yeah, advisor. That's what they do. So they will go back to your business, they look at your books, okay? they look at your processes and all of those things, the impact of, because think about it, we're not dealing with just one, one, one challenge, we're dealing with several challenges. So it's not just the border closure that is the problem that the SMEs mm -hmm. are facing. COVID is a big problem Seriously. being faced by everybody, mm -hmm. including yes. and probably even especially the SMEs. Because remember that when there was a lockdown, and you know, we're even talking about the second wave coming, you know, we're not sure whether oh, yeah. it's going to be a second lockdown and all mm -hmm. of that. You know? So all of those things are going to affect small businesses. Mm -hmm. So small businesses are going to have to start thinking about hiring consultants okay, to help plan their business because they don't really know it all. That's well, the truth. They can't afford it. Well, I would say that if, if you can't afford it, right, you, you probably, you, maybe if you, if you have a friend, right, who has some knowledge of, you know, in the area of consulting or coaching, who can do some form of pro bono, or if, if you can't get someone mm -hmm. to do pro bono, someone who can do it at a sub highly subsidized rate, mm -hmm. right? I want to believe that a lot of coaches and consultants out there would be, you know, just empathic, uh, you know, enough yeah. to, to, to free give lessons. free lessons, free discounts, you know, some sort of discounts mm -hmm. and, and all of that, just to ease the burden on these SMEs, SMEs, right? So that's, that's what I would advise. Don't think you, you, you can do it all by yourself. You need to talk to someone who is an expert in the field who can then, you know, re-strategize, help you re-strategize and, you know, just help you remove.